today we are going to start a new project. We are going to build a tweener and in this video we'll take on the motherboard. The rules are pretty simple, building the fastest possible system using any standard ATX parts, but it has to support a 360k drive, 1.2 meg drive and a standard 1.44 meg drive. So I've been collecting parts for this for quite a while and as you can already see it ended up being a bloody mess of parts from different time periods. But if I have done my homework right, this is the fastest ATX machine I can build that will support all three drives. So the tricky part with this build is of course finding a motherboard. And I have spent hours and hours reading through manuals and old forum posts. And this is what I ended up with. This is an ASRock 775 Dual VSTA board. It has onboard USB 2, floppy controller obviously, ID ports, SATA ports, there is a hacked BIOS for it too. And then we have a PCI Express slot and an AGP slot and dual channel DDR slots. I'll talk some more about the specs as we move on. But this is a pretty unusual and interesting board. So it's kind of a fun build in itself. But before we can start this build, we need to fix this board. Check out these guys here. Uh, it's hard to see on camera, but some of the caps on this board have a pretty substantial bulge. Yeah, check this guy out. No surprises here. Okay, let's recap this board. I'm gonna go for 130 degrees Celsius. That should be enough for this board. I've got my cap list ready here. I'll put it on the screen here in case someone needs it. And you can just pause the video. But you should be aware that there could be some variations between different revisions of boards, so don't trust it entirely. And this thing is so nice and quiet since we swapped that fan. It's so much more enjoyable to work on. And whether I use the fancy preheater or just a cheap heat gun, I like to put some extra support in the middle of the board here. Otherwise the board will get bent from heat. While the board heats up I'll add some fresh leaded solder to make the recap as quick and easy as possible. Okay, the board has reached 130 degrees underneath and about 100 on top of the board. The solder mask is really thick. So I can wiggle the desoldering gun without risking scratching up the board. And the first cap dropped. I like to mark and count all the caps on this side of the board to make sure I don't miss one. And this board has no less than 43 caps. So not a quick and easy recap, that is for sure. I'm not sure if this board is going to stay in this project, but it's definitely a keeper. I better grab the caps that's falling off the board, because if left for long enough on the preheater, they will actually pop quite violently. And that was actually a pretty easy job. Definitely had worse. So this board doesn't seem to have an extremely thick ground plane. I'll turn the heat down to 50 degrees and let it cool down slowly. Since I'm sure this is a keeper, I went with a poly mod. And I think there was only five different values. On this board, the silk screen marks the positive side. It's kind of annoying that it's not consistent because sometimes it's reversed. So we've got a bunch of these 100 micro 6.3 volt caps. Uh, check out underneath C1815 here. I've got some sticky electrolytes. So these caps were not just bulging, they were leaking too. We better clean that up because this stuff is corrosive. And then we have the picky PCIe slot that seems to require one 470 micro cap. And then we have tons of these 1000 micro 6.3 volt caps. These guys are all over the board. And up in this corner we have a few 1000 micro 16 volt caps. And finally up here we've got some 1500 micro 6.3 volt caps. These came with funny legs so I have to unbend them. But that's an easy fix. And all I need to do now is to solder 86 legs. I'm gonna have to put some music on and skip ahead here. Because this is gonna take a while. Okay, we're all done. Let's snip these guys off. I'm gonna wash the board after I have done all the tests. Okay, board looks pretty neat with the more modern looking caps. 
Uh, I guess we better check the condition of the heat paste underneath here. Well, actually, not too bad. It's still soft. Well, let's replace it anyways. Uh, this board, by the way, has a VIA PT-880 Ultra chipset. And now let's add way too much thermal paste. And put that heatsink back on. Okay, and next we have the CPU. And this is a socket 775 board. It doesn't officially have support for it. But according to some forum posts online, this board will take the Core 2 Duo E8600 with 6 megs of level 2 cache, running at 3.3 GHz. So let's find out if that is correct. I guess I could at least try to do this proper. Like so, this is going to make a lot of people happy. That actually ended up looking like mice poo. And I almost forgot to add a coin cell. I'll do this first test with a standard cooler. But we are going to replace it, of course. Now let's add some RAM. I'll talk some more about the RAM in a minute. But for now, let's just test this board. For power, I'm going to go with the Corsair CX500M. That should be enough for this build. I read online that someone managed to make GTX 480 run on this board. I uh, guess we're about to find out if it works. This card needs a proper cleaning and fresh thermal pads. But that is going to have to be for the follow-up video. Okay, I think we're ready for a test. Let's turn that power on. Here goes. Okay, the fan spun up in the power supply, CPU and graphics card. But we're getting nothing on the screen, unfortunately. Okay, that sucks. Something is wrong. Okay, long story short, that was a bad RAM stick. So that was an easy fix. The CPU is recognized and 2 gigs of RAM. I did a previous test with a different power supply, so let's test it now. Yeah, the power supply seems fine. Now, how about that dusty GTX 480? Yeah, it works. Awesome. Okay, so the first basic test is okay. And the fan in that GeForce actually wasn't too noisy. But I will clean it anyways. Okay, so apparently it wasn't a bad RAM stick. Because I found another stick. And it won't post with two sticks installed. So that leads us to the hacked BIOS. Okay, so this board currently has version 2.58 installed. I made a bootable DOS diskette, so let's reboot. And on that disk I placed the flash utility and BIOS version 3.19. Let's see if we can make this work. Error file does not exist. Oh crap, so apparently this flash utility is not compatible with the hacked BIOS. Okay, I found a Windows flasher, but this board refused to boot from the CD-ROM drive. So I had to download all six Windows XP boot disks, but it still wouldn't work. So I had to switch to a different drive, and apparently now it's working. And for whatever reason, my board here is incompatible with the SATA drive I tried with. But this ID drive seems to work fine. Okay, many hours later, this machine is finally running Windows. This damn thing just kept crashing very late in the installation. So every test I did took like half an hour and it turned out to be a glitchy SSD. A fault like this can really set you back. But now it's finally working. And unfortunately this is going to be a short video. Okay, so here's our flash utility. If you win, it doesn't say which version it is. Let's see if this will solve the issue. Um, it seems to be checking the BIOS. System must restart to have the changes to take effect. Do you want to restart now? Well, that's a bit odd. Did it just flash the BIOS without asking me? Well, let's reboot and see. Oh, it did. How rude. That software flashed the BIOS to 3.10 without even asking me. Oh, crap. So this may actually not work. Well, let's jump into Windows again and see... If that software has any options. Oh crap. Things just got worse. A lot worse. Something went wrong flashing that BIOS. I just bricked this board. All I'm getting is a flashing cursor. I tried all sorts of things. I cleared the CMOS and also tried to disconnect all sorts of stuff. 
but unfortunately this board is now a brick and I'm afraid this video is a complete fail. Well in that case I guess I'll start recording a video trying to unbrick this motherboard. I'm pretty sure I have the adapter for this board. So sorry for this very short and rather disappointing video but you just never know where a project like this will lead you. Well I'll upload here and I'll start recording trying to save this motherboard and I'll see you guys again next week.